I got a submarine, he's got a submarine, and we're trying to kill each other. Underwater, no one can hear you scream. All right, welcome back to the Board Game Closet. My name is Jimmy. I'm Rod. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, click the button, subscribe, and every single Thursday, we're gonna, we're gonna give you a brand new video about an awesome board game. Or maybe not. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> because what we do on our channel is we do a simple buy it, play it, hate it rating. So we're gonna try to tell you if we think you should green, go buy this game and add it to your collection. Maybe it's white, maybe you wouldn't buy it, but you'd play somebody else's copy. And then red, you wouldn't buy it and you wouldn't play it because you hate it. So we are going to give you our die rating of this game and then we'll spend the rest of this video telling you why we gave it that rating. <laughs> so here we go. All right. And ta da! <laughs> two greens, two greens. Awesome. Uh, so we say go buy this game. Go buy it right now. Get your buddies together. <laughs> Eight of you, go buy it. That's everything you need to know. Get out there, buy it. It's fun. <laughs> All right, so let's tell you how the game plays, and then as we go along, you'll figure out why we think this is a buy it rating, because sure. everything about how you play this game is absolutely amazing. So, first thing that you do is you set up this divider across your table, and they actually give you two of these, so right. it can go, I don't know, eight foot long yeah, or you're something? stretched out six, seven feet. Yeah, and so it splits the room, and uh, it, it blocks off what your opponent is doing on the other side. So now that you know about that, we're gonna take this away so <laughs> you can see better. But uh, on the, each side of the map, you are going to have responsibilities. So this is Battleship, this is the gamer's version of Battleship, right? Yeah. And uh, so you're gonna divide up the responsibilities of the boat between up to four people. Right. So you can play up to eight people in this game, which is awesome. Yeah. You don't have to have eight. Uh, I think the minimum is like, Two, two right. people, I guess, could be going at this. Um, uh, and then you can also play in two different modes. You can either do this turn by turn, I do something, wait, they do something, wait, or you could do this all simultaneously, you know, just, and go. And so what are the four jobs? If I describe the four jobs and you can figure out how the game works. First, somebody is going to be the captain of the ship. And they get to, on their turn, they get to call out a direction. You get nice dry erase markers. Right. And the captain would say, north, west, east, south, whatever. You know, it's just all that he's going to do. The captain has to follow a couple rules when he navigates the ship. One is he can't ever run into the islands that are printed on the map. Right. And two, he can't ever cross over his path. So he can't do like a loop to loop and go back around. Um, as long as you follow that rule, you can go anywhere that you want to go. Right. The captain also can signal to fire torpedoes, uh, uh, drop mines, send out drones and sonar, all of that kind of stuff. And we'll tell you how that works in a second. Uh, the second person that's in the game is the first mate. And the first mate is going to be the guy that fills up all of these things that the captain's going to get to do. Uh, before the captain can launch a torpedo, this has to be filled up. So how does it get filled up? Every movement that the captain makes, when he says north, the first mate gets to pick one of these areas to mark off. So you're going to be filling this up one at a time per turn. And so if the first mate thinks, along with the captain's input, I'm sure, right. that we should be loading a torpedo, then when he goes north, the guy goes, okay, we need to put a spot for our torpedo. And then turn after turn goes along, and then he can tell the captain, hey, we got a torpedo loaded. Right. And then at any time, the captain can say, launch the torpedo, right. okay? Um, and then it's very uh, battleship style. It's, you know, there's coordinates on here and you would just say, okay, we launched a torpedo at E3. And then the other team would say, you hit us, you missed us, it was a direct hit or an indirect hit. That's what they would say. And you have to be within a certain amount of spaces, right? Right, within four spaces to be mm -hmm. able to hit them. Um, some other things that you can do, you can drop a mine. And so the mine is you you pick a point on your map and you, uh, you don't tell anybody, obviously. Right. But it's just kind of secretive. And at any time, the captain could say... Uh, trigger the mine exactly and they say we triggered the mine at e7 and then the person could say you hit me directly indirectly or you just missed me right um, okay um, the other things that you can do you can fill up a drone which the drone would tell uh, the captain would say we sent out a drone into sector four and then the other team would say nope we're not in sector four or yes we're in sector four sonar is kind of cool uh, when you do sonar the opposing team has to tell you something that's true and something that's false right which is a really cool thematic yeah. thing there because you can't really tell but you kind of right. can and so he would pick one of three things he gets to say a row 
Um, so either a letter or number and a sector. So he could say, I'm on row four, uh, sector two, you know, and then the guy would be like, mm, I don't know which one it is. So that's what sonar is. Uh, then there's silence, which when you fill up your silence, which takes a long time, right? You fill right. it all the way up. But once you do, you could say we're using silence and then you can move up to four spaces in a straight line and then they don't know where you're at, which right. is a really cool thing. And they also have scenarios in the game that you could play through. And so once you fill that up, you could say, hey, we're doing this scenario. Um, and that's it. That's all. Oh, wait, no, no. Let's talk about the engineer. What am I, <laughs> there's a lot more to talk there's about. Still two more guys, two more jobs. Two more guys. And we're getting to the coolest one, I think, yeah. in a minute. So, so the engineer, uh, he calls out, whenever the captain says north, south, east, or west, uh, the, the boat is divided into north, south, east, or west, and it has these different symbols on there. So when the captain calls out north, the, the engineer would go, okay, in the north section, I have to cross out one of these things, right? And so he's got all these different symbols that he can cross out. He's got a radioactive symbol. He's got the torpedo mine symbol. He's got the, the drone and the sonar symbol. And then he's got the silence and the scenario symbol. So why is that important? On your turn, you got to pick one of these things. But if you want to launch or use one of these powers, like the sonar or the torpedo, you cannot do that if one of these that matches the symbol is marked off. So I want to launch a torpedo, but I'm sorry, Captain, we can't because we got to get rid of this. So how do you get rid of that? You get rid of it by filling up all these lines. So these lines that go all the way around the board. And if you fill up every single one of those, then it clears them all off. And now you can tell the Captain, we're ready to launch the torpedo now. And so your engineer is trying to make these decisions on what are we trying to do right now because that's what I want to put the damage on. I want to put right. the damage on something else other than we're trying to launch a torpedo right now. Exactly. And so you do all of that kind of stuff. So that's the engineer. And then the radio operator, which I think is just the coolest. Yep. He gets two things. He has a map of the ocean where you're at, and then he gets this clear, transparent sheet. And so on a turn, he's going to write on the clear, transparent sheet. And every time that the person makes a movement, he's going to draw it down. And so eventually, you probably can't see that, but he's going to have a map basically drawn out of where the opponent was. And so what he gets to do is lay it down onto the board, and he starts saying, well, where could they be? Because he knows you can't go across islands, and he knows you can't cross over your path. So he keeps trying to figure out, and he says, Captain, the only place they could be right now is right here. I bet that's where they're at. Right. And then you, you, know, you shoot your little boat over there to try to get them. And so that's what the, uh, the radio operator does. So each job is very important. Mm -hmm. Each job is fun. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the key to a game, right? It's like, who wants to do a silly job that's not, not fun? Uh, the, um, I mean, the thing that I, uh, other than just the how the game plays, which we talked about, I mean, the pieces themselves, just take a look at what you got oh, here. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's high quality. You know this is going to last a while. You're not going to worry about the fraying on it. They give you multiple maps, so oh, it's yeah. not, so you don't just have you know just the one or two. They also give you for each map you got two different versions, one being the easy, one being the hard way of playing. So in other words, nine sectors versus four sectors, mm -hmm. which really expands the game. Uh, this company, when they were when they're designing this game, they just they just hit all the right buttons on it. I mean, it's, it's I've always enjoyed like the. Um, if you guys remember in the old days, there was uh, certain sub games that you could buy that were you're hunting down. You had to do similar type of things to try to navigate yourself to a location to find out if that's where the ship was at. And that's what you're doing here the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then with the four people on each side playing it, <laughs> communication is so important. Yeah. Attention gets high. <laughs> people are talking back and forth from their team to your team, which wouldn't happen in real subs, obviously. But that adds to the tension, too, because you're sitting there saying, oh, I've got him. I see him. Right. Oh, we got <laughs> him dead to rights. But of course, you don't have him at all. You don't know but, where they're at. But the other team's like, oh, they got us. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> it, it, is a, it is a blast. We just, we just had such a good time playing. I just thoroughly enjoy this game. For me, this the reason I would tell you to buy this, the reason I'm so glad that I have this in my collection is that I don't know if you've had party games that you've gotten tired of, you know, like apples to apples and just uh, even some of the ones that I like, like Telestrations, like I get tired of some of those because they still feel like, I don't sure. know, it still feels not like a gamer's game. And there's something about this that I feel like I've been waiting on a game like this sure. that I can play with eight people. Yeah. 
that feels tense and I have a cool story to tell afterwards. Like, do yeah. you remember when you were here? We were right on the other yeah. side. And, you know, I mean, all that stuff to me to be able to have that immersive of an experience and walk away and to have done that with eight people. Right. In a short amount of time. Well, this, what this kind of reminds me of is how XCOM did, mm -hmm. did a similar, right? But the thing that this game does, you're not going to pull my wife in to play XCOM. But with this game right here, yeah. guess what? She probably can get pulled into this and not really realize that it's as tension filled as it really is <laughs> until we're already way into the game. And then that's and then she'll learn to love it that way. That's yeah. that's that's what I really like about this game is that it could bring in all sorts of people to play. Mm -hmm. totally. Very, very good gateway game. <laughs> I just think I think this is one that you have to have in your collection. I just oh, feel definitely. like have this on the shelf and anytime anybody comes over, even if it's just two people, I'm totally gonna try that. Sure. I mean I I have uh all I've heard that people have played it, they've enjoyed it, and the people that haven't played it are looking so forward to playing right. it. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, I mean, this is a great game. And you can swap roles. Okay, I was a captain this time. Okay, right. let me see what it's like to be the radio operator. Exactly. Okay, well, what's the first mate like? You know, and you can swap roles and responsibilities or try to do two at once. Right, and then going for the free-for-all, you know, where it's just, you know, things are just happening so quickly. Simultaneously. Exactly, so that's, I mean, there's tons of options, depending on the amount of people that you have. There's, I mean, you're gonna, uh, it's gonna fit your gaming group no matter what. I am really trying to think of a negative on this one. I just don't know. I mean, if you're not into tent stuff, maybe that's, maybe you wouldn't like it. But I don't know. Yeah. I, um, play I don't the know. turn by turn then. Right. You know, go turn by turn, right. sit and take your time. No intense stress, you know, do it that way. All right, that's Captain Sonar. Buy it. <laughs> Buy it. That's our rating on this one. Yep. Uh, we got a lot more video reviews that you can check out. Go to YouTube and look up the Board Game Closet. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We've got a Tuesday podcast that we talk about a lot of things. I talked about this one uh, this past Tuesday, so you can check out stuff like that. And as always, support your local hobby shop. B4. <laughs> <laughs>